most people are like, well, I got to write my book. I got to, I got to put it up on Kindle. I got to put it up on Amazon. I got to do the cover. And most of us, because we're so intelligent, think we should be doing all of this ourselves. Think of your book like a, like a dream house that you're going to move into and you're building it from scratch. You would take the time to get clear clarity first. Now your message is congruent throughout and you pick the best stories just like you would in a webinar. I can't put in everything in that. You put in the best stories that get people to do what you want them to do and transform the beliefs that you want. And now you've got the ultimate content marketing piece. This is Experts Unleashed, revealing how professionals and entrepreneurs transform experience into income while positively impacting the world. For years, Joel Irway has helped entrepreneurs develop and launch their expert-based businesses growing them beyond six and even seven figures a year. Now, a professional expert serves their community through paid training, education, or service. This podcast will help you design and execute your plan to become a six or seven figure expert without a massive team. To get more information or apply now, visit theperfectexpert.com. Let's get started. What's going on, experts? It's Joel here with another very special episode of Experts Unleashed. And I've got a question for you. Have you ever thought about writing a book, publishing a book with your information, turning your information into a sellable asset like a physical book? Would it be helpful if I brought on somebody who has published not one, not two, but 11 international best-selling books? And not only that, but his daughter has also published 11 international best-selling books. Guys and gals, this guy, Trevor Crane from Epic Author Publishing, knows how to get this done. We just hopped off the horn, and it was a fascinating conversation that we had together. Uh, we talked about how he can possibly crank out that many books and, and possibly crank out those types of books that are that successful, right? Because you don't want to write a book that's going to be a dud. He's published just within his family over 20 international bestsellers. And we talked all things about what your expert business needs for a book to be successful and how to turn that information into income, right? You are going to absolutely love this conversation. Trevor talks fast. He's a very exciting and an excited individual. So you may have to listen to this one more than once, but there's so many golden nuggets, like strategies for marketing your book before you write it. Um, what he deals with when it comes to pressure and why pressure is important to get stuff done and the importance of hiring mentors and telling the right stories in your book. You do not want to pick the wrong topic when you write your book because it could be a dud. All right, I'm going to shut up and we are going to get right into today's episode. Let's get to it. Hey, what's going on, experts? It's Joel here with another very special episode of Experts Unleashed. And guys and gals, I am over the moon excited about our guest today. Trevor Crane from Epic Author Publishing is joining us today. This dude has done uh, it just seemingly like everything. If you look at his, uh, if you look at his bio, you look at his website. I mean, it's just kind of like holy crap. The dude's an eleven-time best-selling author. He runs a publishing company, and he's done all sorts of amazing things. And I'm super excited to have him on this show today to share his journey, share what he's working on, and just drop some knowledge. Trevor, welcome to the show, man. Hey, I'm excited to be here. And um, Joel, I'm going to give you a task today. Pull out of me something that you think everybody would be uh, benefit from, because I have done a few different things. It's great to get your praise at the beginning, but a lot of those successes came on the back of a whole bunch of failures. And I don't want people to have make all those mistakes. I filed a big bankruptcy at one stage in my life. I don't recommend that. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, I failed more than I succeeded, but let's go ahead. And uh, I've got some cool things we're going to talk about today that I think will be applicable. So your expert audience can actually get some big wins. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it as well. So what I like to do in the beginning is take 
30 or 60 seconds and just kind of talk about what it is that your superpower is. What are you working on right now that you're so passionate about? Is it with Epic Author Publishing? I know you've got your hands in a lot of different things, but like, what is your primary focus right now? So it's a good question. And for the last probably two decades, the first mastermind I ever was part of, uh, this was a question that came up not around superpower, but just on like what you do best. And it was the one of my first millionaire mentors, and and he was a bastard. Like, well, he was no, he's a great guy. I was just really grumpy with his answer because his answer was he, the thing he was really great at was doing what he loved, and and he focused on people that he loved, and and he got people who loved what they did. And I was just like, dude, screw you! Like, like I just like how on tactically, how do I do stuff? So. And, and he actually, I learned a lot from him because he always found people that loved what they did. So it was such a win. And he found an, he built an amazing team and made amazing stuff happen. So I was just kind of, he educated me a lot, but my answer back then is still relevant to what it is today. It comes down to communication. And some people would argue that uh, maybe I'm not the world's greatest communicator because I say, um, and I, I yell too much and I get too excited. But when it comes down to it, I think one of the one of the strategies for high performers and people who are really uh, successful is they're great communicators, whether it's in copywriting or influence or on stage or in videos or in webinars or whatever it is, we need to communicate our message to someone else. We need to understand. And so everything goes under communication, which is so vague. But what I'm excited about today is that I help people with their storytelling. One of the reasons why I got excited with helping people with books is brother, when I did my, when I wrote my first book, which is something I failed at for 20 years, getting back to my massive failures, we can go ahead and talk about like how not to do it. I know how not to do it. But I knew that in the expert space, I needed to establish that credibility. I knew I needed a book done. And 20 years was not like a lack of trying. It's not like I didn't spend time writing. It's not like I didn't spend time, or you know, crafting webinars and videos and different things I transcribed. And I spent countless hours doing this wrong. Within the first 12 months of publish, finally publishing my first book, I 10x my income. And a lot of people throw around 10x as like, ah, 10x this, 10x that. But dude, and you've experienced this when you've worked with clients. I know, Joel, because I know a little bit of like your results with people. But dude, think about the most money you've ever made. Everybody listening right now, write down the most money you've ever made, like let's say in a month or in a year or whatever it is, and put a zero behind it. Like, that's an emotional shift, man. My wife and I were blown away. So that was from writing the right book, pr- learning how to market it and turning it into a powerful marketing tool. And then I didn't make bazillions of dollars by selling the book. The book was a tool to sell my expertise, my, my, uh, my products and services, whatever it is that I was passionate about at the time. It just opened up the door, dude, that more people bought from me. And had I written the wrong book, because what I did that finally shifted that for me was I broke down and hired a mentor. Now, similar to you, Joel, I know you work with a lot of people on webinars. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's still your like core thing, right? Yeah. So it's the thing that I do one-on-one. We've also got another, another company, but yes, I've been known as the webinar guy for quite a while. I Well, that's what I knew you from. So yes, for, forgive me for, but like, that's your thing. And like, there's so many little tweaks you can make that'll make it massively more successful. But a webinar seems kind of easy, dude. Like you're like, hey, you know what? I talk in front of the camera. I do some slides. It's not that bad. A a book also not that complicated. I think it's words on a page. I know words. I can speak. I can write. I can have something transcribed. I can hire somebody. But if you do the wrong webinar, Joel, I mean, uh, I'm guessing you brought a lot of got a lot of clients that you they they were probably really close. They've done a lot of it really well. But unless you fine tune it, it could miss the mark by a a mile. And I get hundreds of people who are already authors and have published books and they come to me and they, their books, I won't say that they suck, but they suck from the perspective of the authors come to me and say, I've got this book and it does not bring me leads. It does not, you know, bring me clients. It does not give me what I want. I think I wrote the wrong book. I wasted countless hours of my time putting the wrong message together. So I've been really passionate the last five years, I think, of helping people tell their stories and turn those into their most powerful marketing tool and make money with them. And it all comes down to finding the right way to communicate. Mm-hmm. And I've got ninja ways to make that happen. Yeah. 
so what do you think is more important with um like i totally get it right the back end is way more way more powerful than selling a seven or ten dollar book or whatever whatever that price is you know up to 20 bucks you know whatever that front end is like you don't get rich off of off of off of those sales in anything right what is the biggest um the biggest mistake is it is it the marketing or is it how the book is actually laid out to to lead that reader into inquiring further work dude that's a really good question what's the biggest mistake so god so i think everybody can answer this question for themselves to a certain degree because if everybody was to look at their superpower or what you do great at you know joel or myself we look at it and we say okay so what are those little tweaks? What is the core mistake that everybody makes? And I think typically it's that we're focused on the wrong thing. So it's, it's not that we're not great at what we do. It's not that these are bad books. It's not that their marketing completely sucks. So it's just that the focus is on the wrong thing. And this is actually relevant to the entire, this is apropos and to the entire process from what the book title is, what the subtitle is, what the description is, what the cover looks like, how they do their marketing. And honestly, Joel, I don't think it's that they miss it by a mile. I think it's actually, uh, for those we're going to do, I know we're on, I think we're on video here for most of this podcast, but the people who are like, it's just, okay, hold on. I'm not going to draw it out. I got a pen and a Sharpie. I'm like, Hey, let me show you this. Cause I'm so visual, but just imagine that one degree shift mm -hmm. is that their ad is just off by a little bit. Their marketing is off by a little bit. And it really is almost, on, it's, a, it's, it's hard to actually see the distinction until you get out about a week or a month or a year, but you're like on an entirely different trajectory over time, like the compounding of it. So one little mistake, one little like miscommunication in your title misses by a, a country mile when it comes down to it. So I think the difference in shift is that people are typically look when, when we go to publish ourselves as experts, yep. we need help to communicate that message to the world because we see the world from inside our own box. And typically it just takes a mentor or a coach or someone to give you a perspective to go, okay, we don't need to reinvent everything. In fact, you're doing really good. There's like 98% of this is phenomenal, but let's adjust that this much and put your energies here instead of there and it'll shift everything. And I think it comes from the go back to, I, I didn't know that I was going to be tying this in, but I think it's communication. The coolest thing about it is that people should be more focused on how their message is received mm -hmm. and how people respond to it versus how cool I think it is when I create my funnel, when I create my webinar, when I create my book, I don't like to guess. I don't like to guess with the book. Most people write a book and they do it with blinders on and they're like, well, Joel, I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my head down and I'm going to write my content. I know what is going to be awesome. And that's like, planning out this multi-million dollar, uh, you're putting a significant amount of your time into a marketing campaign without doing zip, zilch, zero testing. You're like, no, I'm going to put one ad out. I'm going to have one lead magnet. That's it. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I know what I'm doing. Most of the time, people aren't doing the back and forth with their content creation of their book, which takes so much time that they're testing their content so that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're creating the right book. So they're gambling. Most people write the wrong book or they market it improperly because they haven't gotten the proper feedback through the process of creating it. That's my secret sauce is that I go ahead and we start off day one marketing the book. And writing the book and crafting it in such a way that we get clients and we're getting constant confirmation that my message works. Mm -hmm. Before I write a whole manuscript, my mistake in the past, Joel, was I like I know my shit, so I'll just I'll just write it. I'll just mm -hmm. I'll just get I'll just write. Yeah, and that I mean, was like the book is the ultimate form of content marketing, right? I mean, it is it is all your stories bundled up into one nice little package, and. Um, <laughs> And you have the ability to lead your reader through exactly what you want them to, what we want them to hear. And, and the beauty with social media is you could probably test that stuff out from day one. I, I don't, I'm day assuming you one. do some things with, with social media, but totally. Yeah. Well, and dude, you just mentioned another deadly mistake that people have. You just nailed it, dude. You said, uh, 
a book is a combination of all your stories. So this is another big mistake people make because we think we need to, this is our opus. We think we need to tell every story that ever happened that transformed things for us. And that is like packing all of your clothes on a trip, you're going to the Bahamas and mm-hmm. you take six pieces of luggage with you and everything too. And you're like, and you don't use 90% of it. Most of the time people put so much irrelevant crap in their stories, in their books, because they didn't take the time to get clear about the purpose of the book. A book is a tool. Think of it like a key. And that key needs to be very specific and it opens doors. Now, what door does it open? Well, it depends on the key or think of it as a tool. Like I got a hammer and a chainsaw and they do different things. I can still cut down a tree with a hammer. It's just a big pain in the ass compared to if I have the right tool for the right job. It's awesome. And I don't care about my, my hammer or my, uh, chainsaw, the door handle on my refrigerator in the background there was like, was, was, was wiggling at one stage and I needed an Allen key and not just any Allen key. I needed that perfect Allen key and one a little bit too big and one a little bit too small, missed it. And I still had a problem too. Oftentimes I think authors are trying to say, Oh, my book is my most awesome. It's my, it's the ultimate content marketing. Great. So I'll tell every story and it's just, it's confusing. And then the reader, your audience doesn't know what the hell to do next. So what happens? Nothing. That's what happens. Confused mind doesn't buy. That's the motto I go by with all my, all of my marketing. Love it. Yep. So what's fascinating to me about reading your bio, like obviously the number one thing that sticks out is like a word number five, Trevor Crane is an 11 time number one international bestselling author, right? So how, like this probably goes into the whole story of like making sure you don't tell your entire story because you have 11, like you have 11 books, right? So what is that like? how quickly can these people churn like is the average author like writing and, and, and launching a book you're doing, you've done 11, maybe you've done more okay. books, 11 are you know, your best sellers. Okay. So dude, I'm going to use, I'm going to completely like promote myself by holding up some of my own books and I should probably, I've got some client books over here. So I'll grab those as well. But remember as much as that's braggy, they I've got 11 books. Um, uh, I failed to get a book done for 20 years. So, I know some of the mistakes and I shared with the, the, your audience right now that um, one of them is just sitting down and writing your book and trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink in there. So my, my secret strategy woo, was to hire a mentor that had already done this. So the key, if you're going to try to get your webinar done, if you're going to try to get your book done, if you're going to try to do something you've never done before is to find a mentor to help you. Now with that, what they do is they save you countless weeks and countless hours and countless months of wasted time and energy on the wrong things. So it's like building a house. Most people, like most people don't go build a house. Most people buy a house or they rent a house and it's already done, right? But if you were to go build a house, you wouldn't go down to Home Depot and buy wood and nails and, and then like just start building it. And people get excited about books and webinars and videos and sales letters and my new Instagram awesomeness. And I'm going to launch a podcast, whatever it is. And we're like, I can do it. I watched a YouTube video on it. And I just bought a course for a hundred dollars and it's, and it's going to help me. And that's really cool. But like, you know, if you go down to Home Depot and you're like, I don't care how artistic you are. When you start writing out your blueprint for your birdhouse, you could probably build a birdhouse in your backyard and it'd probably be awesome. But by the time you did 10 of them, your 10th is probably a lot better than your first. So my secret strategy of how I get them done is I hired a mentor to help me. And he basically told me stop and no about 90% of the time. I came to him with my first idea and he's like, great idea, brother. And he was a really good coach. He didn't, uh, he didn't tell me no. And he didn't tell me my ideas suck because that doesn't feel good. Instead, he asked me questions, which I like to do as well to, to, and he asked me questions. So I came up with my own answers and I'm like, Hmm, you know, Mike, I don't think that's the right book for me. And he's like, okay, well really though. Good. Why don't you go back to the drawing board? So what I did is I didn't write the wrong book. I went and I got clear and I came back to with my new idea. Now the, the first book I wanted to write was about mindset uh, and about a poem I wrote that saved my life during my bankruptcy. Like I would, I was focused on happy, pappy stuff during my bankruptcy. When I lost everything, my wife, I didn't, I wasn't married, but my, my girlfriend, and I had a love child and she took my two-year-old daughter 
uh, away from me, moved out of the state, left me for probably a lot of good reasons, right? I was filing the bankruptcy and things were kind of falling apart. I lost all my cars. I lost my house, all this stuff. And um, I'm now getting confused of what my point was because I'm now just in this zone. <laughs> but um, what was I talking about, Joel? I just got lost in I yeah, lost so we, my own we, bankruptcy. We started down the road of, of <laughs> how long it takes to write 11 books and like the process oh. of being able to launch it. Yes, launch Jesus. Book. So let's, let's okay, bring, it, I was, bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back. I was that I wanted my first book to be about that journey, mm -hmm. <laughs> that journey of how I was able to build things back and survive and not like slip my throat when all that stuff was going bad. But it didn't make sense to my business and my brand. So what saved my bacon to write a book quickly was I had a mentor that said, that's not the right book for you. And then I had another great idea. And that wasn't the first book I should write. And then I had another great idea. So I got clarity around the best book and Joel, the best book for me, when I got clarity, probably took me two months to just get clarity. I wrote this book called uh, High Paying Clients. It was what I did best, one-on-one -on -one communication and sales to sell high-ticket products and services. It was the one that scared me the most, Joel, to share because it's what I got paid good money for. I was like, why would I put all of my secrets into a book? No one will ever want to hire me. I had a lot of scarcity around it. And my mentor just said, put your best stuff in the book and give it away and watch what happens. I wrote this book in 24 hours, not 20 years. Mm -hmm. it, but it took me two months to get clarity. But when I got, when I had that clarity, this came to me and I wasted some time. I made some mistakes when I got that done, but I got it done in 24 hours. Joel, my goal when I work with my clients now is to help them get clarity and start that with marketing and promotion using a lot of social media. And I typically help my clients for 90 days, not just get clarity around their message, but guarantee that it's connecting with their audience because they turn it into marketing starting day one that they work with me. I'll give you guys a strategy on that that everybody can use starting today because um, it's, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then you can turn that into money. Like there is nothing that builds conviction around you than when people give you money for your awesome stuff and they give it to you at the beginning of the journey. So I, I coach people through that for 90 days. I do a 90 day blitz of marketing and money making and profiting from the book that is not written yet. We design the cover, we design the table of contents, we create the, we create the idea of the course, but we, we sell like hell. We go out there and we start serving and we win. That book gets written in typically less than 30 days. Typically I, I try, I have my clients track their time. I, the goal is to write it in less than 24 hours because now we're laser focused, baby. This is not every story from the history of the universe that I'm going to put in there. This is not doing a lot of research. It's not wasting my time on the right logo, the right cover, the right.com, all this wrong stuff. We get laser focused and bing, that book gets done and it's not done alone. It's done by using a team like I would go ahead and build a house. Yep. If I was to build a house, I'd hire a freaking architect to design. I'd write down all my great ideas. And then the architect would come in and go, hmm, you know what? If you built that, dude, the wall would fall down. You, that's not good. You need a foundation. Right. And then I'd hire the construction team. And then the roofer would do roofing. The plumber would do plumbing. The electrician would do electricianness. Instead of most people are like, well, I got to write my book. I got it. I got to put it up on Kindle. I got to put it up on Amazon. I got to do the cover. And most of us, because we're so intelligent, think we should be doing all of this ourselves. Think of your book like a, like a dream house that you're going to move into and you're building it from scratch. You would take the time to get clear. Clarity first. Now your message is congruent throughout and you pick the best stories just like you would in a webinar. I can't put in everything in that. You put in the best stories that get people to do what you want them to do and transform the beliefs that you want. And now you've got the ultimate content marketing piece. Yep. That's a longer answer, but does that... But, add yeah, no, it's, it's, so what I was really getting at was how long does it take to write a book, right? And you said you, you can do normally do it in under 24 hours, but the, it seems like more of the legwork is actually not in writing the book. It's in writing the right book. It's, it's coming up with the clear idea that you have the right one that's going to make the biggest impact. So you, you also mentioned that there's a strategy for marketing your book before you even write it with social media. So let's talk about that real quick. Cause I think people would find that extremely fascinating. Cause like when there's so many, so many thoughts and ideas about, you know, people who want to write a book, but like, how do we get validation that we're on the right path before we <laughs> write the first word? 
Okay, good question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you another book. Okay, so I'll I'll invite everybody listening or watching right now to to pretend like you just bought a a coaching session, a a private consulting session from me, and you're asking the question Joel just asked. Is okay. Mm -hmm. Hey brother, I, I think I want to get a book done. I, I'm confident it will help me. What's the first step? What should I do from here? And let's talk about it in the context of marketing so you can go out and get a, a, a real result right now. And I think the fruit of marketing when it wins is that you make a sale, right? So let's hopefully, hopefully your audience is selling something high ticket. We just talked about you're not going to get rich on a dollar or 10 bucks, you know? So let's say there's a thousand dollars or more ideally five grand or 10 grand or 15 grand or something that you have a core offer that's going to provide massive value. So let's go ahead. And so what I would first meet with someone is I'd say the purpose of you marketing your book and writing your book is to give people your greatest stuff. Like let's go to uh, Russell Brunson. I know you, you and I both know, mm-hmm. and he does a really great job of, uh, helping and serving his clients in a lot of ways. And he has little stuff you can get from him. He has free stuff you can get from him. You can get his books. And then he has his higher ticket programs. You can pay him monthly for a software. And, but he's got this inner circle program. I think it's about 25 grand. And, uh, and that's like, let's just say that you're going to sell your higher ticket thing, your $2,000 thing, your, your core thing that provides the most value. I like to help my clients when they're starting at the beginning of their book to go ahead and think of what's the most value you could give somebody. Like I just was reading Russell Brunson's book again and again and again, just recently. And I was going over like the brainstorm session of, of like, what's the best, how to give the most value to your client. And you just, you throw in everything in the kitchen sink. Like don't put a price point on it. Just like what would be the coolest thing you could do for them? That's the end result of your book. I believe because you want your book to attract these amazing ideal clients. I can't wait to go ahead and get your best stuff. And hopefully you sell that for more than a thousand bucks. Let's just say you have clarity around an offer and you're like, that's why they're coming in. I'm going to go ahead and this book is going to be a map to get them there. Cause now you know what to sell. Most people don't know what to sell. They're like, I want to get a book done and it's going to be awesome. And what are you going to sell? I don't want to sell yet. I just want to get the book done. Mm. No, no, no. Let's do some marketing to make a sale. And what you can do today. So if you, if you're with me so far, I'd like make sure that when you start marketing your book, you have something to offer. Okay. That's number one. What can you offer? And hopefully it's higher ticket. And don't just give them your brand new $10 program or your $100 thing, because everybody knows that that's kind of crap. Imagine, I mean, this is as cool as it's going to be. You wouldn't show up in a hundred dollar car and you, you know, you wouldn't be proud of it. You wouldn't show up at your high school reunion. Look at the car I bought. I got that one for a hundred bucks. You know, it's, it's not going to provide that massive transformational value. So it's a bigger thing. Now that you've got that in mind, and let's say you're Tony Robbins. So let's borrow from the best of the best. Let's say you're Grant Cardone, you're number one New York Times bestselling author, and you're like, okay, I'm going to put the best stuff in this book. When you start with your marketing, everybody gets to do this today. And the strategy I'm going to share with you, Lisa used in her first coaching session with me. I said, Lisa, do you have something to sell that's really cool that will help people? And she said, yes. I'm like, cool. Here's what you're going to do. And I gave her this homework assignment. But she invested a small amount of money with me, but I didn't even let her like join our program until she applied this homework. She took it out and made $12,000 in the next 30 days with this one thing. She made two posts on social media, one the day we spoke and one like two weeks later. Following up with those leads, she made $12,000 and maybe that's a lot to people. Maybe that's a little, but to give this perspective for two years before that she was losing money. She was losing money to the tune of $300 a month. She was negative every month. The month before she did this, she made some money, but this month that she took out my advice, she made $12,000 a month. She averaged $15,000 a month all last year. She made a declaration. She told people on social media, I know the, the script was something like this. I'm so excited. I just got done talking to a publisher about my new book and it's, and I, and I'm just so excited. And if anybody wants to know about it, please message me below. She got a hundred, 200 different people to comment beneath Mm -hmm. there. And I gave her the coaching to follow up with every single person as though they were a lead. And I don't care if it's your mom, you follow up and say, thanks mom. (laughs) And now you have to ask, you have to, but you turn, mom is a lead. She's a lead into a referral. Mom, who do you know 
that I could interview for my book? Who do you know that might be a good case study for my book? Lisa didn't know the title of her book. She didn't know the subject of her book. She had no idea. She was scared. She didn't have a social media following either. She had, like, barely was on Facebook, had no like list. She posted, I'm so excited about my book. I just met with a publisher and he's going to help me publish my book. I'm really excited about it. If anybody wants to give me some love or would like to be part of it, then comment below. So she had a call to action. She said comment and she followed up with those leads. And because she had something to sell, mm -hmm. I was about to eat this before we talked. I didn't like set it up as a prop. I'm holding up an apple right now if you guys are listening, but because she had something to sell, she was able to close up half a dozen clients times whatever it was. And she made 12 grand in the first 30 days. And then the second post was basically following up about the same. And yep. that was it. And, yep. and this is not unique. This happened last month. A new client of mine named Brandon took, he met me through something similar to this and I got him started and we created the blueprint plan. That's the first stage of like, okay, what, what do you go do next? But it always comes down to making a declaration, having the courage to go. And this is challenging, like to go ahead and say, I'm publishing a book because you're telling God and everybody I'm publishing a book. And, and now that means you're hanging yourself. You got to get it done because now you're either out of integrity or you're going to get your book done. So a lot of people are scared to do this. They're like, but I can't do that until I've written it or until I know the table of contents or until I have a title or a domain. No, -uh. no, 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 no. It starts today. Brandon, one of my clients, went out and did this. He took module one from me. Of, I've got a course called Epic Author Academy mm -hmm. and he took module one and he did this one thing and he went out and inside of a week, he closed a couple clients. Inside of another week, he closed, closed another couple clients. Within 30 days, he closed $17,000 in recurring monthly business. He doesn't have a title for his book. He doesn't have a domain name. He has nothing. He just did the declaration part and followed up and closed 17 K and that isn't even closing all the referrals and leads he got from that one post. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happens when you just make an offer. You know, it's amazing when you, when you just invite people to inquire about how you can help them, you know, it's, 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 um, it, it's, it's fascinating because it, the, the response is everything. The risk, like in the, if you put out an offer or you put out a post like that and, it get, and it's crickets, like, okay, cool. I'm not going to talk about that. Right. I mean, that's the beauty of social media. Like you ha everyone has this warm audience that's already built. They think that they need to spend these ad dollars to build these leads and whatnot. And like, that's going to cold and that's great for scale. But like you already have some form, even if it's just a couple of people that like you already have that close circle of friends that you, all you need to do is figure out what they're going to respond to. It's all about responsiveness. And that is what is going to, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're saying. That's what, that's your guiding light for the topics and the content of your book, right? It, it certainly is. And you gave, you know, as you're interacting and engaging with your client base, I have this all down into step-by-step -step system because yep. we're giving yep. there's so many little parts here. Like if you don't have a clear offer, mm -hmm. um, if you sound too salesy and like you're trying to sell too soon, like, so there's, there's all these little subtleties, but absolutely. And what you're doing is you're building this relationship with your, with your core audience. And some don't care at all. Some are going to call baloney and think you suck. Like these are the things that are going to happen. And there are things you can predict just like the weather, right? Like it's when it's hot outside, you wear shorts. And when it's raining, you prepare with an umbrella. Very few of us are still sitting back crying and bitching and moaning about the weather. We just kind of expect it. You know, we're like, eh, you know, sometimes it rains, sometimes it pours. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold. But let's go snow skiing when, and let's cuddle up by the fire when it's cold. And let's... Um, when it's hot outside, why don't we go water skiing or, or, or go to the beach? But when you're prepared, you know, all too often our first feedback that we get, Joel, is not what we want. If you get two people to comment, that's not enough. And, it, you know, it's so it, it's a back and forth. It's a constant ongoing communication because the other part of that was it wasn't an offer. It was, you're, you're sent you, but you're make, I called it a declaration and now your follow up. The, the key yep. here is the follow up because most people will go, thanks, mom. Thanks, Joel. Smiley face emoji. That what the no, like Joel's a, Joel said, hey, man, can't wait to get your book. Now you got to think, use your to your head and go, OK, well, Joel just said, congratulations. Or I, or I would buy your book. Excellent. Why don't you interview him? Why don't, or you go, Joel's my my degenerate uncle. I would never want my junk. Joel isn't my client. 
cool. Get clear about who your book is for and ask Joel if he knows a successful millennial woman, which is who, who um, Lisa chose to work with. Like, I'm not a successful millennial woman. I'm not sure if you knew that, but I'm not. So like my feedback to Lisa doesn't matter at all. Like honestly, honestly, people ask me about their books all the time because now I'm helping people publish. I have a mission to help 10,000 people, new authors become authors. I got cool stuff to help people with that. So it's, it's really awesome. And people are like, Trevor, is this the right book? Is that the right message? And most people I think in this space speak out of their behind with the answer. They're like, oh man, I know. I'll tell you like, like honestly, I will guide people. I know a lot of strategies and insights, but when it comes down to Joel, what the right message is and what your title should be, like there's a curse word in Lisa's title. I didn't know if that was appropriate for her. It didn't sound like it to me. I'm like, why would you put that in there? What? Someone's not going to like you. And she's like, well, okay. But instead of me telling her, no, don't put a curse word in your title. Like there's number one, New York's best-selling times books with like the F word in the title. It's just got mm-hmm. a little asterisk there. So like, you know, who am I to judge the ideal reader? That's a person you need to listen to. Don't listen to the publisher. Don't listen to your mom. Don't listen to, I mean, you can pray and wait for the universe to bring you messages, but testing baby, talk to it. And then when somebody goes, I think that's a bad title, which Lisa did. I had people on my team because I have a mentoring group and we communicate and I have, I have several, I have, I have like five clients that messaged me privately and said, don't let Lisa publish that book. I would never, I think it lowers her credibility. Lisa is, uh, just came out in Entrepreneur Magazine, Oprah Magazine. She now has a huge following. She gets more feedback on social media than most people would dream of. She created this on the last year and a half. She's be, uh, a keynote speaker at major events for women. She gets more opportunities than ever because she didn't listen to the 60-year-old woman who's mm-hmm. not her ideal client saying, don't do that. Yep. And I guide people with make, let's not guess, let's not gamble, let's know. And it is that back and forth relationship. Yeah, that's fantastic advice just for anything. You know, it's number one, you got to get clear on who it is. Number two, get feedback on that person, right? Because there are people who need help in all the time, all the time. And they're willing to share their story about why they're stuck, about why they're in pain. Like when somebody's in pain, that's all they want to do. All they want to do is cry right? And people overcomplicate the idea of being effective with their marketing, being effective with their communication. And if you just lend, like if you are just starting out or you're not clear on your message, like you have to listen to the people who are screaming. Like that's all they want to do is scream. Like if I smash my toe, like I'm going to scream off the freaking rooftops, right? (laughs) So it's screaming in different, in different forms, but you know, get those people to identify themselves as they're in, in, they're in pain and then just offer to offer to listen to them because that is the most effective way, in my opinion, to develop the right language that is going to identify your perfect customer because you're going to also figure out who you really don't want to work with. There's so many different sub oh my God. every single market. <clears throat> I love it, man. Um, awesome. So, that was fantastic. So that was the first segment of our of our show, and I know that we're we're running we're running low on time. So I want to get to the rewind section here, right? The rewind section is all about Trevor. Like, what were the opportunities that happened in your life to lead you to where you are now, an eleven time you know international best selling author mm. and running this successful publishing business? But like, let's rewind to your like the start of your entrepreneurial career. Like, what are one or two stories? one or two moments that happened in your life that were the biggest opportunity shifts that like, you know, maybe somebody was walking by and passing and they're like, Oh, you should publish a book. And it never crossed or Maybe you always wanted to be, you know, a published author and, and uh, mm. a publisher, but like what stories jump out that made the biggest impact to the biggest shifts, those 10 X, those hundred X shifts in, in your life. Okay. So I think, um, I, tr- I, you asked a big superhero question of like, what's a core competency that I have? And I, and I use the, the, I, I came down to one, I'm a big dumb guy. So like I, I try to come up with one word answers and it was communication. And then I talked a lot about it and I talked about helping people tell their story and stuff. This one, I think Joel, the answer is pressure. So 
now pressure at different times in my life. So when I was a little kid, my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey started when I was four to my greatest recollection. <laughs> Maybe I was five. My dad left the house for a week or two and he sat me down and I felt some pressure. He said, there's a silly little kid, right? He's like, you're the, you're the man of the house now. Take care of your family. Now, I was four. I don't know. This is a vague memory of mine. <laughs> I don't have crystal clear memory of when I was four, let's be clear. But I do remember, like, I had a responsibility. Like, dad sat down and I had to take care of the family. And my dad was a horseshoer. So we grew up pretty poor. I didn't necessarily know that when I was four years old. But I'm like, I had heard that you have to have a business to be successful. So I decided to start a business because my if dad wasn't going to be working... I needed to take care of the family. So I, I, I decided to start a business. Now I, I, I liked rocks. And so I picked up some rocks from my yard and I decided to take them to the neighbor and sell rocks. And I created something that day. I wish I'd created the, I put some googly eyes on it. Cause this is back in 1970 something. So this would uh, to completely date myself, but like I, the pet rock would have been cool because that was a good idea that was missed by me. But I made, I did something that day that most entrepreneurs struggle a long time to make happen. And it, I created a profit. Like I found something, a resource in my backyard and I took it to the next door neighbor's house and I got paid. Whether I got a dollar or whatever, a quarter, I don't remember what I got paid, but that was a pivotal time for me. And I went growing up in a bit of scarcity where I was the poorest kid around. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and all my friends had more money than me. And when my parents didn't pay the utility bill, um, we didn't have air conditioning. And I don't know if you guys know, but Arizona gets hot. <laughs> like, and so I, it was like 120 degrees at night. And there were times I would be crying at night and where I was a little kid or a young man and, and felt the pressure of like, I need to do something. I, I can't let this be my future. I, I don't, my dad was a horseshoer. Like I saw him get kicked in the face and break all these bones and stuff. And like, couldn't even eat through a freaking spoon. Like, I'm like, this sucks. I don't want this. So I made it, I mean, and I never, I didn't make a lot of great decisions, but I decided that I needed to educate myself. I needed to find people to help me. So a pivotal, since we're looking about one or two stories, instead of every story that's ever happened to me, I hired my first professional mentor when I was uh, running my second business. I had had many businesses when I was little, but let's say as an adult, I had my second business and I was doing well. I was making $20,000 a month and I was very proud of myself. For me, that was rich, rich, rich. And I was very proud of myself, but I knew I needed help. And I hired my first professional mentor. And inside of four months, just over, like, let's say five months, I uh, went from $20,000 a month to $80,000 a month. And it's not that I hadn't hired a coach before I'd hired coaches and I, but I hired someone who was an expert at growing businesses, not just for himself, but for his clients. And it was a phenomenal shift of hiring a mentor. And so if I was to tell you two stories, I'll give you three. One story when I was four, I gave you that one story when I hired my first mentor, cause that shifted things for me. I was like, boy, and there are other examples of that. But what happened for me, the, the key component here was pressure, dude until I had pressure, pressure that I had to win or I was going to die. Like they kept coming up and pressure when I filed my bankruptcy and pressure when it's someone hit by lightning on my watch and pressure. It was the pressure times. And I now self-impose pressure on myself versus waiting for the universe to deliver a lightning strike or a bankruptcy. That sucks ass. Like that really sucks. So now I try to apply pressure so that it, it burned. I have a burning pain in me right now to solve problems and to create better results. And that shift came when I hired my first book mentor going back to now I'm helping people with storytelling and books and turning them into powerful marketing tools. Yep. And I bit the bullet and I got authentic with my pain. The truth was I was on a podcast. I was interviewing somebody like this, Joel, who was my book mentor. And I was trying to look cool in front of him because he was cool and I thought he was more successful than me. And, and I heard his story and he wrote his first book when he was going through cancer treatments. And he wrote his first book by speaking his story into his phone when he was, was feeling Mike, so- Mike Koenigs? It was Mike Koenigs. Yep. And he was vomiting into a bucket every day 
and his hair was falling out. And then he just spoke his story into his phone. And that, that, that story became a number one bestseller. That book became a seven figure business and he did it again and he did it again and he did it again. And he started helping people. And Joel went, and I'd heard the story. So here's the thing. I'd heard the story, but when I talked to him and I met him and I gave him a hug and we talked and I interviewed him on my podcast, I was like, maybe I should just hire you, man. Cause I'm feeling a little bit like a fool. And, and my excuses seem really ridiculous now compared to yours and you got it done. So I think it's pressure and we either wait to get cancer that it's going to get real for you, that you need to leave a legacy and write your stuff down and, 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 and make a difference in people's lives at the next level. And then my secret sauce was like, uh, well, could you help me do that? And I had felt stupid to hire a mentor to do it, but he gave me these little insights and, my, and, Anyway, that, that was those, so those are, those were the epiphanies and doing that. Oh, and by the way, Joel, Oh, this was key. My wife thought this was a bad idea, bad idea, really bad idea. And I came to her, Oh, honey, we're going to get our books done. I'm going to become a best-selling author. Oh, I'm not going to become a best-selling author. I'm going to become an international best-selling author and not just me. You are honey. And, and, and our daughter, our daughter's like five years old at the time. And our daughter's going to become a best-selling author and all of our clients are going to, and we got into a fight, Joel. And I said things I shouldn't have said. And she got out of the car. I, I stormed off like, you don't believe in me and whatever. This is one time in my life that I can say, my wife will look back on and go, you're right, honey. <laughs> like, I don't have many of them, but this is one because she called baloney. She called bull. Yeah. Baloney. Yep. On me. And my wife now has five books. Four of them are number one bestsellers. My daughter is 11 years old. She has 10 number one best-selling books. And in the next few months, she's coming out with three more. Uh, I know how to do this now. I'm really good at it. Um, I have a unique approach that helps people get monetize, uh, meet their mission. Really. Most people get it upside down. They try to write their book, then do the marketing, then make money and find out it didn't meet their mission. Joel, I help people with mission, money-making, marketing, and then you make your book. You get your book done fast because you've got clarity and you have a team to help you get it done and whoop it on. Yeah. The book is the end result of all that work. It's it's the end result of all the alignment and the feedback that you've been getting. I love it, man. Yeah, brother. It's a fantastic process. Um, so you, when you hired your mentor, you quadrupled your business in five months. So um, mm. you went from 20 to 80K a month. I mean, that's no small that's no small feat. I was a very happy guy. <laughs> I'm sure you were, man. I think anybody would, um, four Xing your biz business in, in five months. That's, uh, that's big. Well, dude, Trevor, man, we talked about a ton of stuff today. This is a fantastic conversation. Um, I mean, we talked about your entire, not your entire book writing process, but I mean, we talked about like core concepts of just getting feedback from, from your immediate audience and, and, and getting them to tell you what your ideal audience to tell you what it is that they want to hear. So you don't, you know, it's, it's the exact same thing that we do when, when I write webinars for clients or I coach on, 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 um, it's not the exact same process, but like the last thing in the world that you want to do is spend all this time writing a webinar and have it fall flat on its face because, you know, webinars like 11,000 words. If you, you know, if you count all the words and you script it, um, you know, I don't know how much the typical book is. Maybe it's like 20 or 30,000. It's a lot of freaking words. You don't want to put in all that effort and have it fall flat on its face. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's pretty cool that you and your daughter and your wife now have collectively what 20 some odd bestsellers. Oh my gosh. It's so cool, dude. Honestly, like I'm just, I pinch myself every day. I live in a house now that's, uh, that I'm just so grateful to have. Like I'm, I'm at a point in my life where a lot of things are going well and I'm, and I have, um, perspective because I know what it was like when I failed <laughs> and I have visceral memories of a bunch of bad things going, things going South. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would say a lot of this has come from, learning to listen. The best part of communication, I think that is misunderstood is that Joel, you probably figured this out. Like people come to my sales events. When I, when I did my uh, high paying clients book, people would always like, what do I got to say to get people to buy my stuff? 
uh, you know, it's, it's a, I'm just trying to figure out what to say. The magic words. Yep. And it's like, okay, great. You're just, you're so close. It's, but you're, what do you need to ask? Yeah. And, and then when you ask these great questions to your mom and degenerate brother and the, the variety of people that first give you feedback that I call it like fishing in your own pond, mm-hmm. you just, you talk to your fish. I mean, the average person has 600 people that they have on their phone. I, I did, I searched this up on the Google <laughs> and, and the, 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 apparently the average person has 600. I would argue that it's a lot more people that they have contact, like immediate contact within their phone and their social media list, whatever that you can touch, that you can reach. Those are your fish and you can just go talk to them and, and find out you're not trying to sell them. That's, you're not trying to, you're not doing that, but just ask them great questions. You can ask them about what they like, what they don't like, whatever, but you can also get clear about who you want to help and who you want to serve and just ask them for who they know. And dude, they each know 600 people and that the 600 times 600 is a lot more yeah. people. Like I'm not going to do math on this one, but like, that's a lot. And then yep. it, so it's really about asking and um, it's a very special place to be when we get clear about the stories. And I'm so impressed with your 11,000 words because it is that it's choice, man. I'm doing, I'm working on a new webinar right now, several, my wife has one we're working on and huh, I keep wanting to throw in the kitchen sink, brother. I keep wanting to tell them one more story and one more thing and one more picture. And oftentimes people get it's like packing their, their luggage. They put too much stuff in there instead of just streamlining it with it, what exactly works. And it is a process. So anyway, brother, how, how would you, how can I help next? What, what's next for us? Cause I, I feel like I'm going blah, 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 on the right. Yeah. Um, no, that's, it's fine, man. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to direct people to where they can hook up with you and, uh, and learn more. I mean, we, we dropped a lot of, a lot of value here. Um, mm. you know, where do you want to send people? Where do you want to connect people? Okay. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to say one thing. So go to trevorcrane.com and you can find all kinds of cool stuff. I give away my books for free on there. So I could give you a direct link to my books, but why don't you just go look there and and find what you like. And uh, there's a, you know, I think there's a couple that you can just download or you can get the free plus shipping and it costs me more money to print and ship the book to you than than you'll pay in the $3 or $6 to ship it. But that's one way to consume content. Um, I would say I have a great training at epicauthor.com. Um, and my best uh, and newest webinar will always be there. My, my newest training that just delivers my, my training is about how you go from blank page to bestseller in 90 days or less. I've got a bunch of free resources on trevorcrane.com. I've got my own podcast and I, I podcast daily. Um, I've had a podcast now for over five years. So there's so much stuff. I've got an app. You can get my app and download that, but you'll find it all at trevorcrane.com. And you can just get everything or go to epicauthor.com and you go right to how I'm helping people with books and you can just jump in and maybe I'll resonate with you and maybe I won't take what you like and apply it. And if I'm not your mentor, find someone else who is and get it done. Uh, learn crap, learn the story that the magic of how do you put your story into words and in a book so that it can influence people. Um, Joel earlier this year, a friend of mine, passed away and he, um, committed suicide. And so I'm just want to end on this because I'm really passionate about helping people tell their story and make sure that their message connects with their audience because Steve died and he took his own life and my friendship and my mentorship and my program and the variety of things that I did didn't make enough difference in his life to save his life. But I honestly believe when something really yucky happens like that, like I'm trying to find the gift in it. That's one of a book that I wrote that I feel like you should keep asking the question, what's the gift? And I feel like it was, he gave me a mission that I want to help more people tell their story because I believe that if I was playing a bigger game, that I'd have helped more people learn how to craft their story. And because my message didn't count enough in Steve's life to save his life. And the impact that that had on his family and his father and his kids and his wife. And I believe that my calling is to help people tell their story because if, if they had heard your book, I believe that people's lives depend on your message and your story and that your message matters. And if you 
are, and, and if you're not getting your book done, if you're not getting your webinar done, if, you, if there's a next level of communication that you haven't figured out yet, then find someone to help you with that because people's lives are depending on you and their lives are hanging in the balance while you're feeling insecure about your book title. People are, I think it's a life and death situation and we need to get over ourselves and our fears and learn how to better tell our stories. We can connect with more people. And I feel like that's my calling. Yeah. Well, that doesn't strike the motivation in you to, to push you over the edge and, and, uh, and kickstart that book. I don't know what will, uh, Trevor, dude, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, if you're listening right now, please head over to trevorcrane.com and, and connect with him somehow. Let him know that you heard his episode on experts on lease and just give him some love, give him some shout out. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice today this is my uh, we we podcast do all our podcasts on Friday so I'm like right at the tail end. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, it was an honor, man. And if you're listening right now, go go to his sites, download his books, download his books. I mean, like 20 plus bus- bestsellers between three people in his family, countless others of his clients. I mean, he clearly knows what he's doing. He knows how to do it. And um, if you're looking to get your message out there, I highly highly recommend that you uh, just go explore what what he's doing. So. Trevor, thanks again, man. And for everyone listening right now, we'll see you on the next episode. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks for listening to this episode of Experts Unleashed. If you're looking for new and innovative ways to design and execute your plan to become a six or seven figure expert without the massive team, apply now at theperfectexpert.com.